Gonna play some games. It's Purge. Oh, he's here and he's cool. Oh man. I mean, at least all the monsters will be easy today. Oh yeah, they can hear us. By the way, I hope you know that. <laughs> That's fun. Right, I'm actually gonna go grab some tea real quick before we go actual live. No worries. I somehow Sorry. got. Oh, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> like we're live, homie. Well, I mean, mics are live, but hello, everybody out there. Oh, I Hello. like your shirt. Cool shirt. Is it me you're looking for? Did you do something to your hair? Yeah, I probably heard it different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, my shirt it looks great in. compared to last time I saw you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, somehow you still look worse every single time I see you. <laughs> oh. I was, I, think he was talking about the hair I was talking color. about your wig, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my god! Hello. Oh, look at the smile. Look at the little one. Come <laughs> <Under> there. <laughs> We're playing with Santa Claus. He just doesn't have the beard yet. Is that... Wait, what? I was pointing to you, Connor. <laughs> oh. Just doesn't have the white beard yet. Oh, the white beard. Santa. Yes, I had. Yeah, I don't have the no. white beard. No. I should. I should dye that for for Christmas. Don't you think? Yes, you should. Heathens and Heroes Christmas episode. <laughs> I'll dress up as an elf. Don't worry. Ho, ho, ho. Get away from Santa! Get away! <laughs> the big, <laughs> the big buff elf. <laughs> Comes riding back. Protein and shit. Like, fuck the candy canes. I can wait for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> she gets carried away. <laughs> She's like, no, come back. Oh, I want to play me. with you. I only can. Are you eating again? Maybe. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. I'm eating dark chocolate almonds, so. I'm eating water. So am I. Crunchy, crunchy, delicious water. Pringles potato chips. If only you had something to wash that down, like this delicious sprite. Oh, we're not we're not doing an ad read yet, uh, Troy. That's that's later. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what we yeah, are doing. I know what we are doing right now. Are you guys? Do you guys know what that is? Do you guys happen to know what, no. what we're doing today? Please tell me, Connor. What are we, doing? Doing? we are doing episode 14 of Heathens and Heroes. Hello, adventurers, and welcome hey. to episode 14 of Heathens and Heroes. I am considered your host, Connor Coates, a.k.a. Craig or Theron. And thank you for joining us on this journey. That is Heathens and Heroes, a podcast where five friends get together and play Dungeons and Dragons as well as they know how to, which isn't very well. Uh, aside from our wonderful Dungeon Master, Matt, <laughs> your three he or four heroes, uh, Ramus, Troy, uh, Nandor, Mr. Esteban, so. Einar, Lucas, and Craigor, myself. Did I get frozen? I feel like I got frozen. No, Those no, you're, no you're, you're moving. Cool. Uh, well, I, uh, as I step. Okay, you're good. Uh, as we go on a treacherous journey through the Underdark, and the journey has not been an easy one, my friends. Uh, will our heroes escape their, with their lives, or will the heathens of the Underdark devour their souls? Well, to find out, I'll now pass it on to our Dungeon Master Matt to begin the next chapter of Heathens and Heroes, episode titled, New Friend. Matt? Last time in the Underdark, our adventurers had continued their way through the varying passageways and pitfalls that the Underdark provides to find themselves at odds and ends with 
a bit of waffles, a bit of an umber hulk ruining their sleep, and a small cavern where they saw a bit of torchlight and from the inside a few gnolls and one tied up half elf. They, in their way, got the gnolls' attention, took care of one very quickly, and made their way inside where two they found the two gnawing on a third that a moment later rose with the word Yinagu uttered from its breath. And after taking care of them and releasing this half-elf who happened to have a odd owl companion seemingly helping him, they were told that there were more gnolls inside spread out through, through the cavern. So going in, splitting up, and taking advantage of the winding pathways, they restrained decapitated and took care of the gnolls that were inside and after a little bit of some intensive battles some reorganizing of the caverns passages ways passageways our group now finds themselves standing amongst amidst the bodies looking over towards this new figure who uh Lucas, would you go ahead and just give us a full-on description of your character? Uh, now starting us off with, you know, them getting a really good look at you for the first time. Sure. So, uh, Einar, which he named himself as earlier, uh, is uh, got jet black hair. It's kind of short, um, very messily cut hair. Uh, and then he has tan skin, uh, but his one arm has, like, black creeping up it, almost it's about past his, like, up to his, like, bicep area now, uh, and almost, his skin almost looks exactly like, um, like Kragor's skin, like, it's very dark, almost that, that type of color, and it doesn't look entirely unnatural, it almost looks like it just naturally has that color. Um, he's about six feet tall, so he's he's on the taller side like the rest of us. Um, but he's pretty lean, so he's got a little bit of muscle, but definitely not nearly as strong as even possibly Nandor is in terms of complete physical build. So I'm calling you weak, but he is extremely handsome. Uh, you could say that again. Yeah, don't. He's handsome. He is extremely handsome. Double handsome. I bet, his, I bet his charisma's high. Hey. -o. So, you all mm. stand there, except for Nandor, who is currently mm. going through the other northern passages, making sure that the other the rest is cleared, but. Uh, Kregor, Ramas, Eldith, and Rot close to you, but not quite in the same room. You stand there now, looking at this new figure. What do you do? By the way, I am trying to show his face to everybody, but I can't break it down any lower. So, <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I'm gonna walk over to him and ask him his name. For game purposes. Uh, he starts, uh, he immediately starts, like, searching over the corpse that's right in front of him, the mole corpse that's right in front of him. And he looks up at Ramos, he's like, oh, I, Einar, I, I told you earlier, Einar, that's, that's my name. So, what, uh, what's a hodgepodge group like yours doing down in a place like this? Pardon me, I'm trying to find my stuff. We, uh... We were prisoners. We escaped. Ah, oh, that sucks. He says, completely staring down at the body of the knoll, Like, focused on his task of trying to find something. Yeah. What is your deal? What are you doing down here? 
Oh, you know, just living my life. Being alive. Trying not to get captured by gnolls. Why did they have you captured? Usually they eat their prey. Well, I'm sure they would have eaten me if not for this. What's that? It's my arm. I... That's... Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. What's on your arm? Just my arm. That just happens when I use magic. It just starts to do this. It's not very appetizing, I suppose. Where did you get this power? Yeah, I'm fairly certain that they think it's a curse. Probably makes me very not so tasty. One of those types of things. How anyway, I was try? tracking them because they seem to be hunting something. I don't know what, but uh, got a little bit too close. Got a little overwhelmed. You know. How long have you been down here? And uh, real quick, as you're asking this, uh, Nandor, what are, what is your route slash plan as you're kind of searching the area? I'm searching the big boy. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. I will say, what was that? Said he wants the headdress. Uh, I will say, Einar, you do find uh, a few bone trophies and like, strong ears and like a few different small wings across a necklace uh and they do have a spear on them as well a few small javelins uh but it doesn't look like your gear is particularly on this one although you know a majority of their like carryable gear was back at the uh camp that you were rescued from so ah okay uh Oh, the game's paused. I can't move. I can't see anything. Hang on. I'm just on the uh, uh, Excuse me. Excuse uh, me. I actually don't have excuse you in here yet. Uh, he says as he pushes past everybody going over to the next corpse and starting to look through it. 100%, like, he pulls up the necklace of bones and things and kind of looks at it and he's like, Ew, and tosses it behind himself into the cave somewhere. Like, is there something we can help you look for? Oh, uh, let's see. Backpack, uh, bedroll, tent. I had some rations. Uh, I had a hip flask. I had a, a, you know, very important item from my childhood, a little pearl that I carried with me. Uh, that one in particular I'm looking for. You know, things like that. Yeah, am I still in there, or no? Uh, you uh, are not in. The, you don't show up in here on mine yet. I don't have you as a player on my on my player list down here at the bottom. I'm trying, and it won't let me. Oh. Completely close down and reopen. I don't, I don't know. It's a hater. Are you using a different uh, browser by chance? Nope. Let me try this again. Ethan's in here. It's technical difficulty number one. We had a we had a pretty good uh, run there though. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a little counter somewhere like up to, like technical this many days one. without an incident. <laughs> yeah, it just won't let me. Uh, like I'm I'm getting in. It just won't. Could it be a foundry issue again? Stand by, everybody. <sighs> there isn't an access key, right? Okay, I uh, no. gave your character your permission. Uh, so maybe that did it. Try and reload. Appreciate y'all and your patience for uh, these minor technical difficulties. Please pay attention to your gate. Your gate may have been moved. Hold on. 
Thank you for flying Southwest Airlines. Get our property tokens of null. What do you mean null? I'm here. The stream is not sponsored by Southwest Airlines. <laughs> uh, yeah, it won't let me join. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll put on a be right back for a minute while we get this figured out. Guys, we'll be right back. We're back. We're, we're, we're all back. We are all back. Okay. All right. So, where we left off was, um, you know, Nandor going to search the body of the Mole Lord, uh, and, you know, the rest of y'all being told about what Einar was searching for. Uh, in the camp. Across the Null Lord, Nandor, you do find um, his headdress that is on his decapitated corpse. You know, a nice little bone and uh, rope headdress that he can use. Uh, and the rest of what he may have is currently kind of trapped underneath your uh, globules for. Can I drop it whenever? Uh, it does tr dissolve when exposed to daylight, but, uh, Dawn doesn't quite have that yet, so, but I think, it, did it say last an hour or up until- It's an hour. Okay, so after an hour, it would dissolve. I'm playing a- Um, a pint or more of alcohol. Um, do I have any oil or alcohol? I do not. I do not. Can I go like basically undo it with Don being like a little dagger, essentially? Unfortunately, in her weakened state, she doesn't have the uh, same power of daylight as she did. She still has the radiant power, but the radiant itself does not produce the daylight. Hey, wasn't there uh, one more of you guys when you first came in? <laughs> there was. But he's probably searching the bodies just like you are. Oh, well. Maybe he'll he find my even, stuff. He might find your stuff. Would you like some help looking for your stuff? I, I, by all means, please. I'd, I'd love that. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, in groups. So, um, I would like one of y'all to roll an investigation check with advantage as, you know, the whole group is helping collectively for this. He's got the better so, investigation. Got an 11. I have a 10. <clears throat> I've got a 12. Okay, wait, can you roll it? Do you have a plus three? Or what do you have? I just have a plus two. I have a plus okay. zero. So plus, uh, okay, I have an 11. You're telling me that Nandor is the smartest dude here. Hold on, I have an 11 plus one, so I guess I'm at a 12, but yeah. Oh my gosh. This I'm is not rolling. rolling. So who wants like, to do the roll? Can I roll for them? Man, uh, yeah, because uh, this is going to include, like, this will be over the course of a few minutes. Uh, okay. So this will include what you're searching as well. So, Hey! All right. So all together, you know, you all kind of spread out through the bodies. Um, I would probably say Kregor, you would run into Nandor first, unless you stick around this new guy. Uh... I'll stick around him. All right, all right. So, you know, you would probably run into Nandor first, who you can see is, like, trying to cut, like, a butter knife 
with uh, dawn through the globes or the orbs, you know, that are stuck on the body. But it, it's it's sizzling a little bit, but not quite enough to be completely cutting off sections. Hey. What? What do you want? You need a hand? No, I'm good. Okay, I tried. <laughs> and uh, so, kind of looking across all the bodies, uh, you find that they have about altogether 53 silver and about 26 copper. Uh, just kind of collected randomly that they have. Uh, there are a variety of javelins, a few spears, uh, a few longbows and arrows. And uh, you do eventually find kind of spread around their makeshift camp where y'all first come, came in a not pure hide kind of gross covered with stuff backpack that looks like it might belong to Einar. Is this your backpack? Hey, my backpack. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No problem. Hey, side question. What's the difference between a javelin and a spear? Uh, a so javelin's it's... overthrowing. A uh, spear, you can have one or two handed, and you can also throw it. I'll take a spear. Still looking for that pearl of yours, Einar, but I'll let you know if I find it. Is it in my pack? It is I say as I start going through it. Yeah. I'll check the three at the very beginning that we killed out here. Uh, looking over their bodies, you don't seem to find anything that looks like a pearl. Uh, they do have a lot more uh, fingers, toes, appendages, bug parts, and things like that across them. Uh, but in terms of the pearl, do not seem to have any. I take my sword. And I'm going to gut and see if they swallowed it. Make me a survival. Hey, Gregor, you, you might want to go help Promise. I feel like he's going he's gonna to need your, need your help. Just saying. <laughs> Do I get an advantage since you, you see you next to me? or? Uh, I know. Are you helping or watching? Oh, Will under percent help. Oh, that's okay. a good right. idea. I can't like, find yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. It doesn't have to be clean. It just has to work. Mm -hmm. So, Craig, by the time you uh, find Ramos after a brief, you know, like, wait, which these old tunnels look the same, goddammit. Uh, you come across to see Einar and Ramos, like, guilty look up for a moment whenever you come around the corner like you know the parent who caught them with their hands in the cookie jar except that instead of a cookie jar they both have their hands like up to the elbow in the stomachs of each of the knolls that were there and they just kind of look at you real quick as you turn around the corner what do you uh, got there a smoothie well uh it looks like you guys have this handled <laughs> Craig, oh, well, yeah. Do you want to take help. a look at the other ones? Oh, inside, well, the... no, God. Craig Moore, uh, it'd be very bad to not help our guests. Coming you're up. right. I do like to help, Ramos. Okay. So, Craig yeah. Moore, you Craig Moore and it. Ramos. Got it. <laughs> ah, I, I reach for his hand. Ramos. And what was your name? Elmar? Oh. 100% takes his hand, all, all dripping dirty. and goo. All, and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. all good. Oh, God. <laughs> yep, that's Einar. Offer a hand over towards Krikor. All right, Elmo. Well, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> and then I, Einar. Ein. He, he's not the smartest. Right. No, Eisnor. That's what you said, right? Sure, that works. All right, Elmo. Let's do this. 
<laughs> so, Gregor, <laughs> you get down to start cutting into the third knoll uh, as well. The one that looked like it had already been eaten up a little bit by the other two. And not with as much gusto as the other two had, but you definitely more precision, you know, use your dagger to cut open. Not your nice dagger, because this is but disgusting. Like, you stab stuff, but not this. Uh, <laughs> and so you, you know, open it up, and as you kind of peel back the stomach and everything, uh, you can see that in one of its organs, there's this faint white glow. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> well, Ramis, Elmo, yeah. I think I might have found your pearl. Ah, Ooh. take it out. See, what it, see if it is it. Uh, you want me to? You want me to take it out? Do you, do you want me to do it? I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Uh, yes. I yes. got it. I just reach in <laughs> and just grab where the the glow the is. Just, just start pulling. <laughs> and you get stomach and all the attached parts to it as well as you just pull it out, and you can see about the about the size you'd be expecting of your nice pearl, just kind of resting in that stomach currently son of a bitch he actually ate it wow <laughs> i i start like just tearing into it to, i don't have a knife or anything on me at this point so i i get it open somehow <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah the, teeth. the only question is do you use your teeth yeah Somehow, no, that's a little too far. Somehow, Kregor is uh, more disgusted by this than the Blood Eagle. <laughs> you didn't watch the Blood Eagle. That's the thing. Like, I saw, but it. I saw the end result. That's all. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> and I mean, he had to like stay with it for a while since he carried it around. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, with with a little bit of effort, you definitely get back your pearl of power. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, oh, good. Oh. Now, I gotta find my flask. That's the other thing I need. I mean, among all the other things that I, I need. Have made any progress on this thing? <laughs> I mean, not not yet. You gotta. Got the rest of the hour to wait, unless you got some oil of etherealness or some alcohol or some daylight. Some alcohol, kind of would would be in a flask, huh? Can I? Um... Looks what, like we need to find a flask in the backpack. Oh. Can I use bardic inspiration on Dawn? <laughs> I will say, you can attempt to pump a first level or second level spell into her uh, to try and just give her a little, you know, nightcap so to say. I'll do that then. i do a... i do a level 3. Okay. Uh, roll me an arcana. Oh boy. Oh boy. You thought it was just going to be that easy. All right, all right. It was actually pretty easy for you, so. <laughs> you just needed a 10. Uh, it, well, uh, actually, it would have depended on his spell level, so. Luckily, with choosing your level 3, you uh, kind of focus down on it, and you're just like, man, I really want into this bitch. I want to see what he's got. Uh, and, you know, so you focus down towards Dawn. You prep her, you know, you give her a brief plea, letting her know what's about to happen. Uh, and then you kind of, you hum a little ditty as your, you know, magic comes from your song. <laughs> and with that, you know, your hand begins to glow this faint light blue color as just the pure arcane essence of your spell is transmitted from your hand into the hilt and as it touches the hilt it 
transitions into that radiant gold color you're used to seeing from Dawn's Blade, and it all just sucks into it, and for a brief moment, you see Dawn flare out, uh, and with as she does, the bright daylight fills the chamber, and, you know, Ramos and Einar and Kregor, who are still actually over here, you can see that bright daylight start to, you know, filter a little bit through these cracks, uh, through the tunnels, you know, seeing a little bit from where y'all are at. And, uh, as you do, the globules that have solidified and held the body aloft begin to just dissolve and break apart and the body <laughs> falls over. Cool. Do you guys see that light? Oh, what was that? You want to see something cool? Follow us. Okay. And, uh, right. Matt, I'm stuck in the wall. I'm stuck in the wall, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> oh, Lord. I walk up That's to great. him. Who else but Gregor? I walk up behind Andor and I go, I haven't seen that light in a while. How you doing, bud? It's going. <laughs> I continue digging. And uh, as you are, you know, crouched down looking through the body, you do hear uh, Don return. Oh, it feels so good to be strong again. But I can still feel fatigue. This will last for a little while, but I cannot guarantee the day. It's fine. Uh, it's no rush. Remember, we'll be fine. You take your time. And uh, I will say, on our, you know, looking through your backpack, uh, pretty much the majority of your stuff that could fit into a bag is there. It looks a bit uh, disorganized as they probably rifle through it and then stuffed most of it back in there. Uh, but majority of the things that you had were in there. Not the flask. Uh, the flask is in there because it looks like a regular flask. Uh, so, it, you know, they didn't see anything of value. Uh, I will say your two drinks look about half empty. Sons of bitches. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I pull out the flask and I unstopper it. And I just tip it up, and it starts pouring water out, and I just start washing my hands off with the water that's coming out of it. Hey, uh, hey, Einar, you, you, you think I can have a drink of that water? Huh? Yeah, sure. I just tip it up so that <laughs> like... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, TLS, come on. Gregor makes Ahigo face, got it. <laughs> He's thirsty, baby. Apparently oh. so. Let's not bring this back, please. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Is that is that attuned? That's not, right? I uh, don't think it requires an attunement. Uh, nope. Sweet. Yeah, no. I, I, like, it just... The water just keeps coming. Just keep... Like, it's like... Just Endless. water, water, oh. water... <laughs> I'm like washing my hands off. <laughs> I give Craigor a big drink as much as I'll he wants. Too, too. I, do, I just I I'm, I'm sitting there for like for like 20 <laughs> seconds taking a drink. <laughs> Let's not make that motion either, Connor. Come on. What this one? <laughs> Don't. No. What's wrong with this one? I'm just. He's, oh shit. He's got to shake out all the water. You know. It's not a shake weight. God. Oh, you guys are thirsty, huh? <laughs> And someone clipped that. Eldiff and Rock kind of walk up on the scene of just like Craigor, like ah, underneath yeah, the water, right. and they're like, mm. they kind of look at each other, turn and walk away. <laughs> you guys want to uh, spin up? Uh, looking over the uh, Null Lord uh, Nandor, though, as you you know, kind of. Going through the body, you do see that he had a longbow strung across his back and a quiver at his hip that has about uh, ten arrows in it. 
And he also has a glaive on hand as well. Uh, Dibs. Dibs on glaive. Um, I'm going to take all of it. I'm, gonna give. I'm just... Just wait, dude. Jesus fucking Christ. I know how you are with things and taking things. That's why I was like, oh. Just wait. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Alba. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking give Ramos a headdress. I swear, dude. You gotta chill, Usa. <laughs> I don't know how you are. I know how you are. How he was. He's a new in Nandor. I'm gonna toss. Actually. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna toss a bow and arrow also to Ramos. I would say Kragor, but he has one fucking eye. Ouch. <laughs> um and what else did uh, you say? The the owl flits off of my shoulder to the head of the knoll leader and starts pecking at its eyes. <clears throat> hey, nothing can go to waste. I get it. Yeah. Tripping a dick. It starts to give me a headache for a second. Uh, he also had a uh, glaive on him, which, you know, is a two hand axe, but it looks to be like it has a slightly longer shaft than a uh, what Ramesses does, giving it a little extra reach as well. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I left it there for you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sling that shit to my back. Duh. He did take it. And uh, then at his waist, you do find one other thing. Of uh, It looks to be a mostly transparent vial with this faint greenish yellow liquid on the interior and what looks to be a small bit of toenail with still a little bit of the flesh kind of hanging on to it as well that is like floating within the potion itself okay um i'm going to put that in the backpack Is that all he has? Uh, yeah. That really seems to be all of the import, aside from a few random, you know, bone necklaces and, like, little trophy, uh, like they all appendages. Had... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give that stuff that I said to Ramos. I'll take the glaive, put it on my back. Um, and the potion in the backpack that I have. I'll sneak right. and give the bow and arrow to, uh... I already gave it. No, don't give it to him. He has one eye. He's gonna miss. I'm not good with a bow and arrow. That's why I'm gonna give it to him. The faith. The lack of faith. <clears throat> well, you can add at least a uh, bone headdress to your inventory, uh, Ramos, as you now have that. I'll take it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice looking weapon he had there. Yeah. yeah. It is. Ask him how he got it. Are you talking about the glaive or... Oh, 100% talking about the glaive. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. Um, We might need it. We might sell it. I don't know. We'll see. I might take it. Who knows? Still an early day. Right. Well... <laughs> That kind of a, that kind of a relationship in this group, huh? It only gets better, Elmo. As you, <laughs> as <laughs> Gregory, you say that Eldith walks back and kind of looks around cautiously, nods to herself, and walks in, and it's just like, ah, so, hi there, new person. We're really not too bad on the eyes. Are you single? <laughs> I am actually. How are you? <laughs> you know, by this point, I probably am now, so keep your <laughs> prospects open. 
Fair enough, fair enough. I'm not a home Calm anything. down. Wow, that was I, real oh, fast. Right. I, I totally came in here for a reason. Uh, I kind of got distracted with all the mayhem and whatnot. Uh, so we, after I saw your little shower here, me and Ron kind of took a little look the other way. And <laughs> uh, I found some some other tracks. Um, I, so I wanted to know what was the plan. What kind of tracks did you find? Um, they were big, not quite human, uh, and there were two sets, or one four-legged creature with a very odd gait. What are you going to say? Ramas. <laughs> I'm still trying to process that. <laughs> How big are we talking? Like large, so, medium, extra large? Ah, uh, well, probably bigger than the the, the late Arcados' feet. Is I think he had the biggest feet here, so a little bit bigger than his. Okay. Okay. Yeah, big. Maybe a, uh, an ostrich. Maybe a goliath. It did not look like a bird. Maybe a Goliath. I don't know. Maybe a Hulk. Another one. <laughs> it's a jackal. I will say it definitely did not look like as big as the that big bastard that we saw. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, you should go go follow it or rest up either or up to y'all. Let's rest before we go. I don't have any uh, opinions. Okay. I mean, hey, person. I, I don't hey, know. I, I mean, I'm willing to hang out with you guys if you want me to for a little while. I, you know, what's going to probably head back to the city, but, you know. Do you know the way to the city so from here? I'm saying your name because I don't know your name. It's like, hey, what do you think, <clears throat> person? Oh, uh, Einar. Einar is my name. Okay. Why is he calling you Elmo? Apparently he's dumb. Yeah. Checks out. I That's, reach out. My hand. Whoa, whoa. That's news to me. <laughs> All right. Einar, you said you should go right back to the city? From here? Um. Maybe? I have a good, strong idea of where it is. Perception check. <laughs> Do you mean insight? Yeah. Yeah. Insight. All right. Go ahead and make me an insight. Okay. Well, it should be good. Yep. That's what I thought. I mean, that's, that's about as honest as you get. <laughs> I don't know. I think we could trust this guy. <laughs> oh, so are you... you don't know me. I don't know you. I get it. We're new friends. Just meeting up for the first time. Things like that. You know. But hey. Tell you what. If you guys <laughs> want to rest. Let me help you out. And if you guys decide you want me to stick with you for a little while. I'll stick with you. And hey. If I find out where we are exactly. And I know the way to the city from there. I'll take you with me to the city. And then we can just go our separate ways. All right. Thank I'm sure with me, Einar. And Craigor could always use a friend. Hi. Hey, Craigor. What, uh... <laughs> what happens to the eye? Oh, you want to know about my eye? Yeah, I'm curious. Well, it's a really long story, but, uh, <laughs> well, uh, actually, I don't. Improv. Mm. improv. <laughs> <laughs> See, what yes, happened and. was. Yes, and. What happened was I was, uh, I was running through the woods with uh, my sister when I was a child, and uh, we were playing hide and seek. Um, I saw a log. 
uh, that had an opening in it. It looked really, really like a really good hiding spot. Like I really wanted to hide there. And I dived in a little too quick and uh, there was a stick poking out and it went right through my eyeball. So it's actually not a really long story. I don't know why I said that. Wow. Yeah, that's, it's uh, it's not as epic as it, it looks. <laughs> that's uh, that's unfortunate. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure sorry that it anyone. happened. You could tell. Yeah, but at least you were hiding and not seeking. True. It would have been really hard because my eye was missing. That would have made things difficult, yes. <sighs> Though the patch does make you look cool. <laughs> I know, right? Tell, tell these guys. Guys, let me just tell you. Eye patches are in right now. You see, they might I told be you. on the surface, but he can't see for shit, so... I don't... Hey, I mean... I, I resent that. He found my pearl. I did find the pearl. I did kill a, a minotaur. I don't know if they told you that. I know that, that was me. I did that. Ooh. You, see, you see my helmet too, right? You see my. I, I see that. It, it looks like it was quite a while ago. You guys must have been adventuring for some time together. Yeah, it's been a, just, I don't know, a day We've or been two. We're trying to get out of here, is what we. Ah, uh, right, right, right. The whole prisoners thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but... Let's just say someone went into water. And there was a bunch of skeletons. There was a bunch of undead. It was me. And there was a, there was an undead minotaur in there. And yeah. Anyways, but you know, time flies when you're having fun. So and with friends. Um. So it's 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 it seems like it's been a lot less time than it's actually been. And then I'm just gonna look at Einar and be like, friends, we're not friends. Like I don't say it, but I lip it. It's just like mm. we're friends. <laughs> No matter what that one says. Well, point. Right, right, right now, right. right now, me and Ramis are friends. Ah, okay. Well, um, did you guys want to still rest before we follow the tracks, or one question? I did you want to? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Do you like ripple bark waffles? I can't say I've ever had ripple bark waffles. Then you're in for a treat, my friend. In the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so again, doing... the question, rest or do you yeah. guys want to follow tracks? I mean, Eldith, how fresh were those tracks, by the way? Ah, it's hard to tell down here sometimes as there's not so much uh, wind or other elements to really show the time passage. Uh, but they looked fairly fresh. Uh, I imagine if this pack was down here for something, they either scared them or were looking for them. Okay. Well, what do y'all think? This is a team effort, after all. When did you become about the team? Don't question it. I'm what, questioning it. What does a team want to do? What do you want to do? How about that? And we'll go from there. Eldith, my dear. I walk over and put my arm around her and start walking down a path away from the rest of them. <laughs> Let me tell you all about my adventures that I've had away from here. Well, as the arm goes around, you'll see her face go about as red as her hair. And she just starts to, like, nod and follow. <laughs> I lean into her, I'm like, are they always like this? Oh, you have no idea. It was worse a few days ago. I thought they were going to kill each other, to be honest. I mean, frankly, I'm surprised we made it this far. But when it comes down to it on the wire, they are all very dependable. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. I'm glad. 
I'm glad to hear that. Would you like some whiskey? Oh my gosh, yes. I pull out a bottle of whiskey from my pack and pop it open <laughs> and hand it to her. I've had nothing but dirty water, mushroom, food, other <laughs> random bits, rats. Oh, I think I ate some leather at some point. No, oh, yeah, I could I could use this. Oh, thank you, Idenor. You and I are gonna be some good friends. Once we get to Gontelgrim, I'll really treat you. I look forward to it. And she takes a, a good hefty swig and kind of gives a <gasps> yeah, oh, it's been a while. It must have been for you to react like that. Well, you know, I've been down here for a few months, so a, a wee bit. I just start shooting the shit with her off to the side while the rest of them all figure out what they're doing. That's one of the fucking tracks. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's follow the tracks. You lead. All right. How's everybody looking right now, by the way, in terms of health? I'm but a bit over half. 35 out of 40. I mean, I'm trying to keep it vague, but sure. <laughs> Little scarred up, heavily wounded, you know, that kind of thing. I'm, uh... My finger hurts. <laughs> Ramos? Uh. As healthy as an ox. So not wounded. 42 out of 42, baby. But the others, I cannot say. <sighs> Alright. So then, Nandor, uh, you head presumably back the way that Eldith came through, which was down this tunnel? Yep. All right, so y'all pass, uh, you know, Einar and Eldith, who are kind of trading stories about some of the random shit they've seen from the uh, surface and in their time down here as well, kind of comparing notes and whatnot. Uh, and they, uh, Eldith kind of looks up at you as you walk by and is like, oh, we going after it now? Yeah. Oh. Uh, we'll pick this up later, yeah? Are you, you're, you're sticking around? Mm-hmm, he is. Yes, uh, I am. Then, uh, let's, let's head on this way, then. I, I found it on the, uh, other side of that wall there, as she points to the wall you're, uh, walking towards this one. Okay. And, uh, I as give you... a, a quick whistle, and the owl flies over and then flies straight over and perches on Nandor's shoulder. What's its name? Well, sometimes I call him shit for brains. Sometimes I call him asshole. So yeah, crazy. Since it's felt with the C. You know, I'm sensing a lot of hostility between you and Craigor and Andor. Did you like yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah, uh, let's walk and talk. Sure. He just makes really shitty waffles. That, By that, the way, I should that's note all. that the owl is creepy AF. <laughs> okay, describe it. Uh... Its legs are covered in very short black feathers, so it's very unusual coloring. It's got like a white chest and a white face, so it has that kind of specter look, like it's got like a black cloak over it with like a, you know, white face. And its eyes are red. Cool. Not like a glowing red, but just red. Okay. It's a pretty cool looking owl, by the way. Thanks. His name's actually not Shit for Brains, but you know. You can <laughs> just call him Shit for Brains. 
All right, shit for brains. <laughs> um. All right, so we're gonna continue following the tracks. While I talk to him. Uh, I will say, as y'all kind of come around this corner, you can see that Ront is at the far end, kind of leaning up against the wall, peering over the side, looking that way right now. Okay. <laughs> so walking over there, I'm just gonna start whispering a little bit. It's like, yeah, he just makes really shitty waffles. And he got offended because I didn't take one. Well, I mean, he's he's your adventuring companion. You have to you have to cater to the fact that he, you know, makes you waffles. He doesn't have yeah, to do that. Yeah, I was planning on making French toast. He's like, no, no, waffles. Okay, okay, I understand. I understand. So if I was you, I would say to him, hey, you know what? Tomorrow, let me make you breakfast. <laughs> we'll see how he takes it up. You just gotta be diplomatic about it, Andor. You just gotta be diplomatic. Yeah, he doesn't... You got to not speak to him diplomatic. He won't understand. It, it'll confuse him. Nonsense, nonsense. I didn't say you speak, like, high-class diplomacy. I just said diplomatic. I know. I know what you said. So, as y'all uh, arrive down uh, here, Rock kind of looks back at y'all and is just like, I heard some noises up ahead. Some sort of clacking or clicking. Uh, I don't see anything, though, and the noises have retreated. I can, uh, if you guys would like, I can go ahead and scout ahead, see what I can find. All right. You do that. Can I, uh, do it stealthily, please, Matt? As always. Go ahead and roll me a stealth. And, uh, also go ahead and roll me a survival, as you're going to be looking for tracks and things of that nature. Solid. Well done, sir. Very well done. So, very quietly, blending in with the darkness around you, you move forward and around the corner, heading up to where you had seen. As you get across this passageway, you can see the faint bits of scuffing from what looked to be null tracks, kind of heading deeper up into the cave where Nandor had seen them before. Uh, but continuing on a little bit further, you do see the pointed, clawed-like feet of some sort of creature that cut from this area and went straight into the tunnel down here. Uh, it's, and it's one of those uh, tunnels that you would have to squeeze into and through. So, uh, I'm, I just I go back and I tell them all what I just found. Verbatim. What do you want to do? Well, uh, it went through a very tiny opening. I'm not sure if we can get through it very easily, but if we walk together, we might be able to uh, get out of it unscathed. Uh, maybe side by side. I think we should go in groups rather than all together at once. Hey, okay, something. Oh, okay. What does everybody else think? Silence. I elbow Ramos. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, if nobody's going to make a decision, then right. I'll go check it okay. out. Okay. <laughs> wow. This feels... Uh... Feels a little tense in here, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna not, go ahead. On. I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, Krieger, let's go. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Don't make me fucking do it. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I make it smell like shit with precipitation. Only to him. What? Why? Why, Nandor? <laughs> Why? Come on. Now I gotta try as much of this shit with just. Okay, let's just go. Let's go. All right. So, uh, Krigor, are you still uh, in the lead currently? I have to see with you. Yeah. Yep. yep. And uh, Nandor, are you rolling me a stealth, or are you just kind of following? I would just follow. I would still right. like to stay as stealth as I can, though. And uh, we'll look back at the others and be like, shouldn't we like at least move closer to where they're? I'm just gonna move closer to where they're going. Let them go. Let them go. I know what they're doing. Let them go. Uh, okay. I know what they're doing. They're fine. I, I'm gonna. T hey, I'm gonna. Yeah, uh, your group uh, dynamic. I'm gonna talk to Don. It's like just tell Einar to come. I'd like to talk to him. I mean, the owl is still perched on your shoulder. Yeah. Uh, as you know, Nandor, you're starting to squeeze through past our behind Ramas. Uh, Einar, you get this message in your mind. It's an odd sensation whenever you're not expecting it, uh, but it is a faint feminine voice uh, that sounds strong but still it's just this kind of faint voice in the back of your head that uh comes through and just says uh, nandor says you should post up outside the crevice i think back in my mind with practiced ease and there okay. All right, so the two of you begin to make your way through, and uh, Krigor, you uh, staying ahead, keep an eye forward, and as you get to about here, you start to hear this. <laughs> sounding like it's coming from two creatures. Okay, I kind of signaled to Nandor, just like a halt hold and be quiet all right i'm going to talk through don again hopefully craig doesn't freak out i look over at uh ramas and i go uh they're hearing some weird noises up there i'm, I'm gonna tell craig it's like push up a little bit and tell me what happens to speak to don so you, Craig, will also hear that feminine voice come through, uh, saying, uh, Nandor says, you go get a good look. <laughs> Alright, I'm just like, yeah, he would. So you quietly squeeze your way forward uh, ahead of them and get to a point where you can peek in but still stay within the crevice and kind of hidden uh, by the um god dang, brain fart sorry uh happens shadows of the crevice itself and you feel very confident as you come forward and as you do as you're just about to sneak out, there's this <laughs> right next to your head as you're about to reach out. And there's this large, what looks to be a claw of some sort. It looks like it's made out of bone or a uh, chitin or something like that. And it comes down and out like a hook that just grasps into the stone and pulls back, missing you. Uh, and tearing out those large chunks, and then you see this head move inward into your uh, visual of a creature that is armored, almost like a turtle, but with these insectoid chitinous pieces across it and holding it together. And instead of frontal 
front paws or claws. It has these two long uh, forearms that end in hooks themselves uh, with this beaked face. And as it tilts its head towards you in this almost parrot-like fashion, you can see that its eyes itself are grayed out and blind, but it still seems to be staring directly at you as it goes. What do you do? So, so Don can hear my thoughts though, right? Like I can speak through mm-hmm. it through my mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I kind of relay the message to her to, to relay to Nandor and Einar and all of them. Just we're in trouble. Um, <laughs> while I'm thinking that I'm also trying to determine if we should just back out and find another way <laughs> um, maybe I'm asking them that through Don as well I don't know if this is the viable way to get I'll out of re- here I'll, I'll tell Don to relay it as well that way so you know Don just kind of gives a projection to everyone you know uh, trouble ahead something bad tight spot very tight. Not going to be able to. Let's go. They need us. With right. that, I'm going to have y'all roll initiative. Oh, no. Oh, wait. It says game is paused for me. Uh, yeah, because you were moving, uh, but now we're rolling initiative. So, Matt, Matt, did he, did it, did it actually see me or was it just looking at my direction, in my direction? It's blind. It has sonar. It uses the clicks to see where you're at. Oh, yeah. Oh no, oh no, oh no, my leg's asleep. <laughs> Why is there still a null on there? Because I accidentally caught a minute. <laughs> Damn it, wrong. What null? So, starting us off then, at the top of the round, is actually Kragor. Um... So, even though it's it's using sonar, with me being rolling that twenty seven stealth, I'm assuming I'm still in that stealth. Is that correct? You are unsure. Okay. Um, is it possible for me to maybe pick up a rock and throw it past the the bird to kind of throw him in the other direction, or or this creature? Sorry, not bird. Uh, go ahead and roll me a dexterity as you are using, uh, you know, that to throw. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, and where are you throwing? Like, trying to just throw past it to the other side of the wall? Yeah, just trying to make a turn, turn, turn direction. Muted. Muted. Oh, yeah, sorry. I I clicked some wrong stuff. Uh, It, as it, you know, you throw the rock out, it quickly turns as soon as it hears it hit the wall, and you hear some shuffling from deeper in as well. Uh, Something else just kind of (laughs) from deeper within. Uh, But it does seem to look away. Okay, and as it turns away, I would like to scoot a little bit closer and try to assassinate it if I can. All right. Um, so you do scoot closer, but you do not get the advantage because blind sight, I think, just allows it to see perceive everything within a certain radius. So that, that's what I'm getting. Uh, actually, as a fellow DM, Aaron Lord, how do you deal with blind sight? Because that's that's a question I have. I, I'm usually I'm always brought with. Yeah, I typically view it as exactly like you're saying. It it just it sees everything. It's like a daredevil. Yeah, exactly. Just less good looking. Much, much. <laughs> Nothing cocks for days. Mm-hmm. Uh, so unfortunately, no advantage. But because of your assassinate perk and you hit, it still will be a critical strike. So, because you're first in initiative. 
Okay. I can't move closer, by the way. It's It's got me stuck behind this wall. There we go. All right. Um... Wait, um, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't use my critical. Well, no, that's okay, because that was... Uh, you still have to roll uh, to hit, so... Oh, yeah, my bad. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, unfortunately, first attack does not pierce through as it hits the armor of the backside and kind of pierces off it being a little bit more uh, hardy than you expected. You still do get a second roll, or a second attack, if you want. Wait, did you ever pick up the second dagger? Yeah, I did on the way out. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, technically, you'd have to use your other dagger, so we will switch that up. Oh, my God. Matt, you're too benevolent, dude. <laughs> well, he can't use dagger or venom twice. He doesn't have extra attack. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyways. Benevolent. Benevolent. It paid off. <laughs> so in a similar fashion to the Ember Hulk, you strike with the second one and it strikes off and it hits out of your hand and actually flies upward and gets kind of stuck in the crevice slightly above you. Uh you still have movement if you'd like. Um I, uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I don't really see anywhere else to go. If I go back, I'm going to be in trouble. All right, then Nandor. Oh, boy. Okay. So, you have the game paused. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move... Uh, what's that, like, 10 feet? Yeah. Uh, and I really can't get past you? Not in this crevice. It looks a little wider right there, doesn't it? No. So You have gonna... enough room to, like, touch chests, but that, that's about it. So I'm basically going to... Like, move Nandor's... Or not Nandor. Kragor's head down, and I uh, use a tentacle rod. If I can. Okay. Uh, so then, yep, definitely. First one hits. Uh, make an attack with each one, so three attacks. Oh, that was a 19. Oh, wait. Second one misses, unfortunately. And so does the third. The third just misses. Okay. But you do get one, so that is uh, 1d6 bludgeoning. Okay, it won't let me... Uh, so a way to get around that is if you go to the edit and the other formula, you can just put uh, d6 in there. Then I'm hitting, like, damage on it and it won't let me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so go to the inventory and where it says the item and it has a little square with a pencil in it. Yeah. If you hit edit and go to details, down at the bottom it says other formula. Just put it under there for the 1d6 or however much, you know, for y'all's items. And it's a way to get around that until they update country. So it's, for other one, it's 1d6 plus bonus? Uh, no bonus uh, okay, for our uh, deals. Yeah, yeah. Just 1d6. Okay. Oh my gosh. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah, it'll show up for the next one. Oh, uh, and Gregor, did you notice how all of your icons actually have an icon now? We all do. <laughs> what are you referring to? In your inventory? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sweet, man. Nice work. Oh, the Minotaur helmet! <laughs> I found a thing. <laughs> that is sick. All right. Bri I so... still have Bryce's bosom chip? I thought I got rid of that. 
Uh, one of the tentacles whips past your head, Kregor, and strikes it across the face. The other two come out, but it catches them on its uh, hook claws and kind okay. of throws them off to the side. Uh, any bonus action for you, Nando? Um, bonus action, bonus action, bonus action. Can can Dawn go bright again or not really? Uh, if she's still out, she's still uh, at her full length right now. Okay, would that help blind these things even more? Because it's daylight? I mean, they're already blind. Alright, well, I'm just going to use Bardic Inspiration on the... And Craigor. All right. Craigor, you get a nice D8 as what is your inspiration, Nandor? Don't miss next time, please. Fair enough. All right. Then after that, it comes to Eldith. That's fun. Um, okay, let me find Elda. <laughs> uh, you're good if you want to just tell me what you, uh, because she's, uh, up in the corner around next to Ron right now. Well, she really so, can't do anything unless she's so close. Uh, she doesn't 10, have a power or anything. 15, 20, 25, uh, gets her about halfway to the entrance of the passage. So, uh, that's all she's she really do. If you want, you can dash to get up to the entrance, but that's about it. Yeah, do that. All right, she's standing next to the entrance, just in case. Einar, come see you. Hmm. I'm gonna move up. Matt, would you be able to move me just so I could see the movement? Thank you. But the mystery. Can I roll an arcana or uh, any sort of checks on what I'm being relayed as being seen? Um, Like what kind of checks? Like to find out what? What they're looking at, what they're fighting. Uh, go ahead and roll me a nature. Or survival. All right, all right. Um, so, uh, you would kind of gather, uh, you know, if uh, Dawn is actively kind of relaying what is before that she sees and senses. Um, you could probably gather it would be a Pakor. I would have read about them before you had come down to the Underdark as one of the potential things out there. I see a little cat tail. Dog, actually. Even better. Be or be. Um, what do I know about them? Um, that they are strong and hardy creatures that, uh, have, that use echolocation and have even keener ears as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, well, shit, they're hook whores, and, uh, yeah, you guys can't hide from them, just so you know, which I'm saying out loud and in my mind at the same time. All right, yeah, from your position, that's easily enough heard by everybody. Uh, any action for you? 
Yeah, I'm going to. So I, Einar starts to encant, and as he's encanting, you see the the black. Those who are close to him see the black creeping up his arm further. Um, but it's Kregor and Nandor who actually see an effect out of it, and I'll wait till Nandor's back to say what happens. Nah, 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 nah. What's gonna happen? We don't know. Find out next week on Heathens and Heroes! Ten hours later. Y'all wake me up when he gets back. A few months later. I mean, this is in the start of COVID, all right? So, you guys know any good jokes? Two guys walk into a cave. They get stuck. That's all I got. Past, present, and future walk into a bar. It was tense. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I like that one. You go running past tents. Or why can't you go running when camping? Because you run past tents. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Nander, we were waiting for you to come back. Y'all so, uh. You see a thing. Yeah, so, so. Like the, the, the owl on Nandor's shoulder takes on this like soft silvery green glow that spreads down into Nandor and his wounds begin to seal up. You know shit for brains? I don't know why they call why he calls you shit for brains. <laughs> uh you'd have to edit I think the healing as well. Uh how much? Mr. But it'll be a D8 plus four. Oh, so I roll it? Uh, it's uh, two D8, because I use second level slot on it. Two D8 plus what? Oh. What? You froze for me. <laughs> four? Four. Plus four. Yep. Shit. <laughs> that was almost max. <laughs> nice. All right. And anything else for Ina? Nope. That'll be it. All right. Then at the next round, we have the hook horror next to Mr. Craigle. So it is going to kind of lean slightly in towards the uh, entrance way that you're kind of, you know, pressed back into. And its two claws are going to reach out trying to get a hold of you. First attack. And... Unnatural, at least. Hmm. Oh boy. Now, Matt, you might have explained this to me. I, when it was my turn, I know that because he had blind sight, he wasn't able to, or he, I, I wouldn't get a, a or, um, advantage on the attack. But. It, it does that does that still count even though he hasn't taken a turn in combat? I mean, I still wouldn't get advantage on that. Uh, it gives you a auto crit if you hit, but it doesn't give advantage. At least, hold on, let me double check. Looking stuff up is really fun because it says you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in the combat yet. So actually, yeah, you're right. That's my fault. My apologies. No, it's. I mean, I was. I was kind of confused on the wording. I thought that that's what you were referring to. 
but uh, it's up so to you what you want to do. So a 14 and a 12, 12 right? yeah. is for your first attack then with your, uh, or, you know, uh, a 12 and 12, I think it was, with your dagger and venom. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and just make me a quick dagger attack with uh, advantage for your regular dagger. All right, all right. So that one will hit for sure. Uh, so that is going to be 2d4 plus 66 damage. <laughs> uh, good call on checking that little part of the assessment. I, I, because I, I honestly thought that's what you were referring to. I just didn't. Uh, when you said advantage, I, that's the first thing I read, and I just read it wrong. So, I apologize uh, for said, not catching that earlier. Oh, you're good. You said just six, six d six, two d four plus six d six. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is that an Irish wolfhound? It's a girl. She is an Irish wolfhound mix. Yes. Ah, I girl. love those dogs. She's so cute. Look at that face. So your second attack would have pierced through that little line in between the back of the shell, getting a nice good cut, getting this greenish, uh, darkish green blood kind of out the back. Uh, and in response, it turns angrily and then brings its claws into your shoulders uh, in anger as it lashes out dealing only 16 points of damage only más es todo por qué no me hacen two two minimum out of the, out of the dice so could have been yeah. more yeah true, true. necesita más he needs more come on uh thank you for allowing and that by the way appreciate it Oh, no problem. You know, uh, I, I I know my faults. But then after its turn, it comes to Ramos. Not much I can do, so I'm just going <laughs> to walk on over. And then... I would say get my spear and the shield out and try to 300 it. But these two guys are already stuck inside, so yeah. I'm, I'll try to tell them I have an idea. Get back. If they listen, they listen. If they don't, they don't. All right. So you hear uh, Ramos call that from behind you, uh, Craig or Nandor. And uh, do you want to hold an attack as well? I'll hold an attack. All right. Then after that, it comes to the secondary hook horror down below. <laughs> it can't really move in towards you, so it is uh, going to stay back and you just kind of see past the first one, Kregor, a secondary one now with these slightly darker colors to it and a little bit of a pattern across its chin as it just kind of comes around the corner, clacking and looking in your direction, but unable to get closer. So, no. after that comes to Ront. Anything you'd like him to do, Ramos, or just get closer as well? Just get closer as well. Uh, also, I didn't update it, but I thought about it. Uh, since he's, you know, lasted this long with y'all, he's also going to get a uh, uh, multi-attack. So he'll now be getting two attacks per turn. Just because, you know, we survived. Uh, I'm not dividing up their experience with all y'all, so they don't get the level ups, but he will get a multi attack, so okay. balance out a little bit. Uh, did you want him to use an action to get closer or stay right there? Uh, I'm using another action to get closer. All right. Then, top of the round, it comes to you, Kregel. Um, okay. Uh, I can't really, like, get past him either, right? Is he kind of blocking the way, or? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Nandor. Yeah, yeah. Or no, uh, no, I'm talking or, about no, the, the hook horn. Yeah. Um, I would have you make me a uh, acrobatics check. See if you can like squeeze enough through his moving body to get through to the other side. Yeah, yeah. You definitely get enough room to squeeze if you need it. Yeah, I, I imagine I do kind of a, a squeeze and a shuffle just to kind of get around him, you know? Mm-hmm. Under the arm as it swings for you, you know? Uh, pulls out a little bit of your shoulders. Um, and then uh, while this is happening, I kind of want to, while the shuffle's happening, I want to see if I can drag my short sword maybe right behind the knee just to see if I can wound it a little bit. All right, go for it. With the Bardic Inspiration. Okay, add a D8 to your roll. Unfortunately, you, you, me, dude. <laughs> you know, the, the movement between trying to squeeze between the swinging arms and everything, you just don't have enough force with the pull across its knee as you get to the other side. Cool. Anything else? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Did you actually move inside? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do another dagger attack. All right. How many daggers do you have? I've got two. Okay. Besides the venom? No, just the dagger venom and the dagger. Isn't the dagger stuck? Uh, no, because uh, his assassinate perk, it, it can't stop the negative one. Okay, okay. Because... Just making sure. Is I forgot about that. Uh, so that'll hit, but unfortunately, you don't have someone close enough to get the sneak attack, so it just does a d4. Still good though. Got this. Huh? It won't roll, let me roll the damage for some reason. I'll I'll do a regular roll. Yep. Let's see. It's because we gotta modify all the weapons to have the other formula. I just haven't done that yet. All right. So you come around, and after you know getting frustrated with the uh, sword not cutting through, you just kind of stab it in the butt real quick. Uh, you know, get a, get a little venting out. Take that. Nandor, come see you. Well, I was planning on running out, but fuck it. Let me move, please. Yeah, oh, that, that, that little spot's just a little too tight for the uh, thing. Okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh my god, I still have the fucking club. Um... <laughs> Bent ass rebar. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna use Dombringer. Ooh. Ooh. And you do have advantage because you're flanking right now. So make another attack roll, see if you get a uh, nat 20. Attack. Nope. We'll take the 25. All right. uh, One or two handed are you using? Two handed. All right. Uh, Trying for versatile weapons, try and call before the weapon attack, just by the ways. Okay. Uh, so go ahead then and roll me a d10 plus uh, four. So it's a roll one d10 plus four. Plus four plus two. Uh, no, because the plus the extra plus two I include in the plus four. Okay. It's your dexterity plus the two. So. All right. So you take a step forward and drive a solid stab into its uh, 
you know, abdomen area. And you can see from the other side, Kregor the Faint lighting up under its carapace of dawn from the inside. And you're like, hey, Nandor's on the other side. Uh, and it, it looks it looks quite unhappy with it. But now you've got the large, blind, beak-faced, insectoid creature staring right down at you, Nandor. Uh, bonus action? Um, I can't use a cantrip, right? <laughs> uh, you can. You haven't okay. used a spell as long as the cantrip is a bonus action to cast. So. Well, I don't have anything that... Well, fuck it. Um, I'm going to basically tell Don, well, we're in the shit now. Tell the others that we're kind of stuck over here, but we'll handle it. Just kind of chill. <laughs> uh, so she'll relay a message back to y'all. They've got it flanked and trapped in the entrance. Time to Nothing. pull out. Um, All right. Then... Bonus action, bonus action, bonus action. Can I use pipes of sewers? <laughs> uh, it's an action to summon up some, uh, some rats. But you still do technically have rats on you from uh, the first one you summoned. I just haven't moved them with you. Okay. Nandor, or not. Fucking Andrew, I'm just getting confused. Kregor, what is your health like? <laughs> Uh, he, my he, ribs hurt really bad. He's got some, uh, heavy wounds, like some bleeding shoulders. You know, you can see the blood splatter on the ground from where he got some hooks in him. <laughs> I'm beat up. All right, so 1d4 plus mod and bonus. Which will oh. be a plus three. Alright, you gain five health. And what I'm gonna say, it's like, don't worry about this one. I'll, I'll take care of it. Take care of the other one now. Cool. Alright. Then it comes to Elda. Uh, I'll say she's gonna kind of look back to you, Ramos, real quick for the moment and be like, um, I heard that. You want me to go in now or do y'all want to go in first? Go. Well, right behind right. you. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and she'll just use her action to kind of start to squeeze up behind you, Nandor, and after a second, you do feel uh, her hand kind of poke you in the backside, and she's like, we're back here, we're making our way, can we go in further, I'm kind of stuck. Kind of preoccupied right now. <laughs> and then Einar, come see you. Okay. Hoot hoot, bitch. <laughs> Do it. Um, yeah. I guess I'll start moving forward then. So am I able to see it from here? Uh, you can, but between all the bodies between you, it does have half cover right now. Now remind me what half cover does. <laughs> uh, plus two to AC. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me use the third level spell slot. All right. So you just reach out and kind of a little bit aiming over, you know, Eldest head and a little bit over uh, Nandor's and just from your fingertips, they all shoot outward. Uh, are they all aimed at that one? Yeah, I don't see the other one from here, I don't think. Oh, yeah, that would be true. 
Uh, so that is 5d4 plus 5. Did you just spirit gun it? <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> spirit shotgun, man. For real? Oh, gun! But it's a homing spirit shotgun, which is nice. That's awesome. So you shoot them all out and they all strike across its carapace and its face kind of bloodying it up in a bit and kind of oh, popping out one of the eyes uh, as well. It, it, it looks like it's up. getting beat up. I screwed that up. I should. I was going to use uh, one of my meta magic feats on it. But... I just That's imagine... Okay. I just imagine the magic missile is like turning into punches and just like... Gah, gah. If you look hard enough, the end of them are all little fists. <laughs> cool. Um. Yeah, I assume I can't. I was gonna. I should have twin spelled that, but. Um, oh, I couldn't have anyway. Okay. Yep. I'm good. Uh, I think that's all I can do. All right. Um... I'll, I'll, I will say. Um, we really need to get moving forward. Working on it. So after you then, the horror for you, uh, Kregor and Nandor, it is going to try and swipe out at both of you. Uh, and so first attack towards you, Nandor. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna use shield, but fuck it. <laughs> All right, and then one attack towards you, Craigboy. Do I need to call uncanny dodge right now? Um, I believe that's if it hits. Okay. So, uh, remind me again what's uncanny dodge? Been a minute. Uh, uncanny dodge. Uh, when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use a reaction to have the attack's damage against you. Yeah. So let's see if it hits you first. So. It does not. It does not. Then I will hold on to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, one hit towards you. Uh, yeah. Fucking home slice. Yeah. <laughs> That's his nickname now. 23 health. Got it. Uh, and the second one, as it comes back and around, it goes for you, Kregor, but you see it coming, so you duck, and it spins and uh, gets its claw jammed into the wall there for a moment. Uh, and as it does, it uses its movement to get over here and try and start to pull it out. Its uh, next attack roll will have disadvantage. Ramas comes to you. Not much I can do. Um, I'm just going to try to move, I guess, as down this little crevice as fast as possible. Oh, oh, that's wrong. Ah! It would get you about there. Uh, still holding the same action for now, just in case. <laughs> all right, all right. Drink, kind of, man. Yeah, yeah, you squeeze through your shield still before you, uh, and everything, your spear at your side, just kind of like, god damn, tight ass fucking caves and shit. All right. I'm going to do the same thing, so. When it gets to his turn. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so then it comes to the second book horror. And as it's there, it, you can see Kregor <laughs> standing next to it, that it is um, highly agitated, and it's got its arms kind of spread out to its sides. And as you're looking at it, you can see actually just past it, there is what looks to be a opening into the ground, almost like another crack or crevice kind of broke up behind it. And it seems to be trying to stand in front of it protectively as it makes its two attacks out towards you. Oh no. <laughs> Uncanny dodge. 
All right. And the second one. All right. So for the first one. So you would take half of that. So you only take five for the first. And 10 for the second. So a total of 15 to you. As it comes through and you dodge the first one, just it cutting across your side, and uh, your uh, arm instead of across the chest. But the second one comes up as you're moving to the side and catches you in the ribs. Uh, and then a bit more blood to spray around the ground. And uh, after you, it comes to Rot, who tries to make his way behind uh, Ramos. And as he gets there, he's just like, I hate tight spaces. I know, bud. I know. So do I. We're getting there. Use your anger on them when you get there. And you all just hear this, you know, slightly muffled uh, as Kregor comes to you. Okay. Um, maybe uh, I'm kind of, before I, I do anything, I kind of look back and, you know, kind of in pain, talk back to Nandor and then I say, it's protecting something. I think we're in the nest area or something along these lines, guys. <sighs> and God damn it, dude. Um I'm gonna kinda tell them maybe they should get out of here. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I can't respond. <laughs> We're already here. It's too late. All right. Um, is the the one up top that's not in flank anymore, right? Obviously Can not. Can I talk out of turn, or uh, for a reaction? Yes. Okay, I was gonna say this, Gregor. Do you want a pet? I mean, I've always wanted a a puppy. <laughs> We're gonna get to the next best thing. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I don't see. I don't so, see what that does for me right now, Nandor. <laughs> just kill these things. <laughs> okay. Um. So uh, it is not in flanking currently, but uh, since Nandor is close to it, it does get the uh, sneak attack if you hit. So. Cool. Then that's what I'm gonna do. Um, use the dagger. Do, uh, do I do advantage then or just normal? Uh, just normal from your current position. Well, I meant like, like that. You, Cause you said for the, uh, for the sneak, right? I have to be like behind him. Uh, for the sneak attack, you just have to have any ally within five feet of your target or advantage. So if, if Nandor could literally be standing anywhere next to it and you oh. would have a sneak attack. It's just the positioning that would change your advantage for flanking. So, Gotcha. Right there would give you flanking. Yeah, let's do that. Is that a ledge you can hop off? <laughs> uh, that's the edge of the crevice that he just saw that kind of leads deeper down past the other hookor here. You saw uh, So... <laughs> the 27 does I hit. Do. Mm, isn't that a natural 20? Yep. Sure is. Alright. So that is 2d4 plus 6d6 plus 1. Or no, plus 4. Yeah. All right. So very efficiently, you move over to the side, and you see it's one arm that is kind of trapped in the uh, wall. 
So you just bring down your dagger of venom uh, at the elbow, and you may not have gotten the knee, but you completely sever the arm, and as you do, the blood kind of spurts outward against the wall, and it takes a few steps back and starts to fall backwards and die. Uh, but as it lands on its back in the ground, the other one lets out this <laughs> in anger, and uh, uh, anything else for you, Nando, or Craigor? See, Nando, now you got me doing it. You're welcome. It's a curse. I blame my parents because they're always like, John, Joshua, James. Yeah. Yeah, about <laughs> siblings, I feel. They're like, Travis, Thu, Troy, Thu, one of you. God damn it, get over here. And I'm just like, all right, damn, huh? Um, I, uh, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna take this time and fill my dagger with some venom, I guess. And kind of wait wait to uh, see what happens. I believe it's an action to coat your uh, blade. Oh, did I already use... Oh, okay. Your Three action coat. was your attack. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> if you made something out of the rope to, like, go down, would that be an action? Uh, depends on the, how in, uh, intricate something he's trying to make just to like hang over the side of the ledge to not be in the I'd say thing. you know uh, it would just be pretty much a uh, bonus action to create you know tie off to some sort of outcropping nearby if you want to have it like efficiently tied if you want to just quickly like drop your rope and jump down that's a free action so can I see how deep this crevice is um, it looks, since you've got dark vision and all, uh, probably about 15 to 20 feet, roughly. And the ground on the inside, it looks, instead of, like, the same hard stone that you're standing on, it looks closer to sand. Okay. So here's my thinking. I'm dead if I stand up here, and I'm dead if I go down, so... <laughs> I said to get the rope and just hang off the ledge. Uh, I, I, I mean, 15... 15 feet, yeah, it's, that's a pretty high jump, but if I can see that it's sand, I may be able to impact the roll on it and see what I can, see if I can kind of get down a little safely without using the rope. I don't, I don't see how I would use the rope right now. Or what I can tie it off on, you know what I mean? I mean... Okay, which one's still alive? At the, the one called the, the, the one, crevice or the one next to the wall? The one by the crevice. Yeah, the one next to you died. I'm just gonna hop down. Alright. Uh, are you going to be using a bonus action to disengage? Because you still have one? Yes. Alright. All right. I know you don't use those often, so they're easy to forget. <laughs> Uh, so with the disengage, it does not get an attack of opportunity against you as you basically slice it off and in its fury, you just kind of like, buh boy and slide down. <laughs> uh, make me an acrobatics real quick as you're trying to defuse the fall. All right. It's like a sandy day in the beach. The worst part of it is now it's in all of your armor. But you land, you roll, you're, you're down there. And as you come up from your roll, you can see a little bit further, kind of towards the back of the cave, there is one uh, oval-shaped, what almost looks like a sand-colored rock. And it's just sitting there nestled in the sand. And Nandor, it comes to your turn. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Where, which one is it? This one? The one without the skull. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I can't move up to see that. Um, if you can move me up, that'd be great. Okay. So, what I'm going to do... I'm going to be like, the sun's getting real low, little fella. The sun's getting real low. And then I'm going to rip the sun with Dawnbringer and fucking smite it. 
Alright, alright. Why? <laughs> Swear to God. Fuck! You you bring it down and it just steps to the side as it your blade comes down. I'm gonna be like you fucking bitch. <laughs> Bonus action? Uh, I don't have any bonus actions that are cat trips. Fuck. Uh, um. I mean, if it's a spell level, you can use it as a bonus. You know, if it's got a bonus action. I don't know if you got anything there either. <laughs> the only bonus action that I have in spells is healing word. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to use Bardic Inspiration on... I forgot your name already. I... Einar? Einar, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to come and take care of this real quick? All right, so Einar, that's a D8 for you. Uh, and then... Uh, it comes to Eldith. And she's right there next to you, so... If you want, you can take back over control, uh, Mr. Man, or... <sighs> Two strikes. Okay. Attack. First will hit. Second will hit. Wow. So you can do that as 2d6 plus two, uh, 4, shorthand version. So, you know, she, she cuts a little bit into the carapace. A little bit. Not deep, but enough to definitely start drawing some blood from this one. Uh, and then Einar comes to you. Wait, was right. that? Because she she landed two strikes. Uh, sorry, what? Was that for two attacks? Because she yeah. landed both. Okay. Uh, yeah, because they're one d six plus two naturally, so we just combined it all. Gotcha. All right. So then Einar. Uh, I'm gonna move forward. I just can't move past this part of the wall. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what you're talking about. Now your characters can never leave. Ha 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 ha. I mean, wait, Ramos, get in there. <laughs> it's the plan. Um. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> trying to debate what's the better course of action here, and I guess I'll go with... Um... Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> Kill us. It's only a 20-foot radius, guys. You'll be fine. Kill us. Do it. Do it. I'm going to cast... Uh... Frostbite on it. All right. Oof. It, you cast it out, and you can see the little bit of like crystalline frost that uh, begins to form over one of its arms, but then it just flexes as it turns, uh, and it shatters the frost. Yo, this hook thing is fucking ripped. Any bonus action for you, sir? Yeah. I can cast a, a first level spell still if it's a bonus action, right? Because that was a uh, cantrip. cantrip. Or, oh, yeah, that was a cantrip. So you can still cast any level spell. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold on to it. All right. All right. So then, after you, Einar, it comes to Romas. I need to get around that corner, if you can help. What corner? 
Yeah, which one? I'm basically gonna run at it, spear in hand, and I'm gonna try to drag it off the edge and down and land on it safely. Okay. I'm basically like a gigantic spear just going through it and then like taking it over the edge. All right, so then first thing I would like you to do is make me your attack roll to see if you hit. Um, was that with your proficiency added in there? No, it says not proficient. Uh, so and the proficiency is plus three, so that would make it a 15. So that is just enough to hit. So, to push it down, you will have to make an opposed athletics roll with it. If your athletics is higher, you will push it down into the crevice. Normal or advantage? Uh, normal. Haha. <laughs> that thing's beast. It does not move, unfortunately, but you do manage to drive your spear straight into its stomach. Uh, go ahead and roll me damage. Two hand is 1d8 plus your ability modifier, which is a... Whoops, wrong button. Three. So, d8 plus three. Whoa. Uh, no d6 plus three. Let me just do this one again. Did your damage roll work? Yeah, damage work. Oh, that's weird. Uh, it would be versatile damage, not uh, regular damage. All right, so... So well, if you I want... It's going to say if it works. Nope, nope, didn't work. Nope, nope. So yeah, 1d8 plus 3. All right. Get a nice solid stab into it with your first strike. Uh, any bonus action for you? Anything else? Um, can I do an action surge to pull it out and stab it again? Definitely. Thirteen. But don't. Yeah. Can I also use the? Can I re-roll to get a higher damage? Oh, for your savage attack? Yeah. Uh, I'll allow it this time. I'll take it. <laughs> it's too good. Next time, do it before your next attack roll. <laughs> so 16. That oh, that's for damage, buddy. Oh, so you'd be re-rolling the 1d8 plus 3. Yeah, yeah. It'd be trying to get better than an 8 for your last attack. It's for the actual damage, not the attack roll. So we'll take that, yeah. All right. Then, after your turn, it comes to the hook horror. <laughs> it is going to straight run down past y'all, squeezing itself through the crevice down to where Kregor is. So, Eldith, Ramos, and Nandor, you all get an attack of opportunity. Cool. As Kregor, you just kind of look up after looking at that, and you just Damn now it. see this thing squeezing through the crevice above you, like just furiously Damn looking it. down. Does the Do owl get an attack of opportunity? Well, that'll hit uh, Romus, and uh, does the owl? It plucks out of time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's technically within attack range, so. Uh, I so, I go, go ahead and, oh, and what try was it? Like, I go for the legs and try to trip it up. That way it, like, stumbles and falls. Um, does right, right. get two attacks or just one? Uh, just one for a reaction okay. attack. Uh, so, go ahead and roll me your D8 plus three, uh, Ramos. And you've already used your savage attack once, so you won't be able to use that for this roll. Yep. Alright. 
solid six. And uh, 17 will hit. Hoot, hoot, motherfucker. It leaps up and just scratches it <laughs> with its talons. It does one damage. Yeah. Nice. Why? Why the eye? I can't even see. It can't. But if it goes for the eyes, it can still bleed and, like, you know, cause it. You know, soft spots, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it then uh, squeezes down. You know, you cut across the back of its calf, but not enough to completely make it trip down into there. Uh, and it then comes down like a very protective hook horror for you, Gregor. Oh shit! Uh, can I can I do uncanny dodge again, or? Uh, it's come back to your turn. So yes, yes you can. It's an eight. All right. Your so. AC. What's my AC? It's a 15. Oof. So close. Yeah, so close to death, too. <laughs> oh, shit. That's not good. So, uh, the first one is a 12. Uh, are you using your uncanny dodge on this one? Um, yes. Fuck. Come on. Come on. Are you down? Please so, don't tell me you're down. Six plus nine, uh, fifteen. He's down. Yes, I'm down. Fuck. Okay. All My right. Turn. As it just comes down to the ground uh, where you are, gripping into your chest and your sides as you uh, are have this, you know horror movie moment of it just staring at you like some terrible monster and you just see the flecks of your blood as its claws dig in. Rocked. He just moves as close as possible, comes in, sees the dead one and is like, "What? what where's the other? What's going on? Down there, Ron. Let's go. <laughs> at this point. So he can use his action to also go down there. Uh, with a dash, or... Yeah? Alright. Uh, 10, 15, 20. As he starts to slide down, you all hear an OH SHIT! Uh, as he then comes down, and so he's into place, uh, but cannot make any attacks. Krigor, I need a death save. Fuck. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, yeah, look at you. Um, on the right under side. your attributes, yeah, under the right, next to exhaustion and uh, all. So just click death save and all right, yeah. So that's one success. Nandor, come see you. All right, I'm gonna run over here. I'm gonna use healing word at a level two. All right. So that's 2d4 plus 3. You want me to roll it, or are you, Connor? Uh, go ahead. Okay, so roll 2d4 plus, plus 3. three. Yes, sir. There you go, you got 10 health. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, And then I'm going to jump at it with... Dawnbringer. Okay. Uh, make me your attack roll. That'll hit. Then the damage is 1d8. Or, yeah. Uh, if you're using one handed, yes. Yeah. D8 well, plus 4. Would I be able to, like, midair, just, like, go like that, essentially? Yep. Yeah. Right. Easily. So what, D10? Uh, D10 plus four. And you know, you kind of have to slide down and your feet hit it first. And as your feet do, you lean forward and stab into it. And you kind of ride it back down to the other side. Okay. All right. Uh, so 
Then anything else for you? How oh, so not dead? <laughs> Uh, no, and then it comes to Elda. Yep. Anything you'd like her to do? Run. She kind of steps up to the edge. Basically attack it. All okay, right. So, for so she'll also do a similar maneuver of coming in, uh, sliding down and making her attacks as she goes down. Second one hits at least for a d6 plus two as she comes down the first one just striking off the arm getting unable to get through but cutting below and past she does cut it across the uh, uh, abdomen dealing six points of damage. Die damn it. Come on. Bleeding but still angry and up. Einar then comes to you. Okay. So I step up to the edge, which I assume that's edge enough. It is indeed. Stop talking about me. Come on. All right. So Einar pulls the pearl out and it starts to float in front of him and swirls with the silver and green flaming energy as he encants around it and that energy goes into him and seems to absorb and some of the black on his arm goes down so I'm going to use the pearl of power and I'm going to get back a third level spell slot with that Ooh, sorcerer points. I'll dig it. And then I'm going to... I'm going to cast another spell. So very quickly after that energy is absorbed into him, he continues incanting. And the black on his arm goes up even higher. It's almost up to his shoulder at this point. Like much higher than it was before. And as he does... Does Nether take can't, notice of that? I can't tell him... I can't tell Not it what... Uh, that. Damn it, okay. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't give me actually a spell slot. Hmm. Uh, regain one expended spell slot. Right, it does, but it, it doesn't actually put it on my sheet, is what I mean. Oh, I uh, you should be able to, yeah, yeah. Right, so, so, as I do that, I'm also going to use, um, because that would normally be an action, I'm going to use Quicken Spell to make this a bonus action instead. All right. There you go. And um, so the owl uh, flies up off of Nandor and flies over to Kragor, lands on him, and as it does, that same silvery green energy goes out of the owl into Kragor. And, and then it, it gives you a little peck on the forehead as, you know, yeah. like the conduit. <laughs> and, then, and then it flies up to me up top and lands on my shoulder. It takes no attacks of opportunity because it's got fly by attack. All right. So for Kregor, he uh, will get 3d8. Plus four. You're the Let's man. Go. All right. And anything else for you? Top you off? Nope. That's going to be it. All right. 
And, you know, Ramos, you were the only one close enough to really see the transition and change in his arms as he used the Pearl of Power as well. Uh, just, you know, as you're the only one up there with him. But with that end of his turn, it does come to you, Ramos. I'm going to pull out my axe. I'm going to look at him and say... <laughs> or, uh, no, it's like, a, well, it's a Beverly Hills uh, cop reference do where he's like, do it. we really need to talk. <laughs> you know when he pulls the guns out of the trunk of the car and he's like, Jesus, Billy, we really need to talk. Uh, basically, same instance of like, we need to talk. But first, this is where the fun begins. And I'm going to leap off with the axe and I'm going to go to chop off his fucker's head as I'm on going down. All right. Go ahead and give me your attack roll. That'll hit, and it'll put you in the only available position right there. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, what? Oh, shoot. Okay, so it won't let me do the, the uh, D12 plus 3. And then you can roll it again to see which one's higher. 7. Wait, are you raging right now? I'm not. Okay. All right. Take the nap. All right. You come down on it and you bite into the back of its neck, but not deep enough to completely sever the head as it cuts down and across. Uh, still uh, seems to be up. Uh, definitely bleeding from multiple areas. <laughs> sort of fucking god, dude. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not you, Cortana. Why do you have Cortana turned on? I it just slipped my mind all the time. I'm just like, yeah, I'll do it later. Sounds about right. Yeah. I hear that. And then I guess I'll use Rage just to get ready. All right. So then next comes to the hook corner. And as everybody is kind of landing and turning, you know, it's uh, turning towards each person as it gets struck and uh, attacked. But as they all land and you all get into position, you see that its intense eyes go instead from Kregor now to Eldith as it turns. And, uh, you know, each of you didn't really have a chance to see it in the fray now that Kregor was down, and this creature was down there. But Kregor, you know she is the one standing closest to that little rock that you saw. So it turns to her, and it is going to make its attacks. Can I use a reaction to, like, kind of jump in front? Uh, without the sentinel feet, no. Okay. So... First one is a 12, which I don't believe hits. Uh, no, 16. Nope, oh, just hits. So, second one hits at least. Dealing only 11. And, uh, you know, putting one good gash uh, across her shoulder and down her chest. Uh, but, you know, she she's a, good, she's a strong gal. Still up. Do you want me to put the damage or you already got it? Uh, I got you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> still up, still up. Uh, Very strong. Mm -hmm. Then comes to Rot. Uh, you know, two sword attacks now that he's finally close enough. Yep. Second one hits, so that'll be a d6 plus three. <laughs> All right. He dealt a little bit of damage as he just tries to get a stab in where he can against the armor. And then Craigor. 
comes to you. Come okay. on, Clutch. Okay, so, uh, you know, about as fast as I went down, I feel like all of a sudden I just got this second wind of energy. I, I was like, what the hell just happened? But I popped back up, and I'm fucking mad, dude. I'm, I'm ready to go now. Oh, he's raging? Now the rogue's raging? <laughs> the rogue is raging. Rogue rage! <laughs> the rage kind of, like, you know, went to him, too. Like, he's an empath. It, it exudes off of uh, Ramos. He picked it up real quick. <laughs> Yeah. I just feel the energy from Ramas and it's passing through. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a double dagger attack, dagger venom, dagger, All right. and just kept it going. Uh, you do have flanking with Nandor, so your dagger venom does get it. Are your attacks get advantage? That'll hit, and you do get your assass or not assassin, uh, critical or not critical. Goddamn words, uh, sneak attack. So that is. 2d4 plus 3d6 plus 4 for your first damage. Ah, la madre. <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta calm that down real quick. 1d4 plus 3d6 is Yeah, it? 1d4, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? 1d4, 3d6, 4. Still a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's dead. Please fucking tell me it's dead. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so... Even with the minus four of the extra four that's on there, making it a 24, it's still dead. So, Kregor, claim your kill. So, uh, as I saw it, at, at, right after it attacked Eldith, I came up behind it, um, really angry, just grabbed it by its beak, pulled it up, and just slit its throat left to right. And you know it's slightly greenish, icarish blood, and just starts to break. And Elder is like, "Oh God!" <laughs> uh, for a brief moment, but you know it, its body then slumps and falls forward into the sand, kind of bleeding out into it as well as you ride it down, Gregor. And as you do, we're gonna take a quick break. Oh, okay. So I know it's, but we, this went a little long because of the combat. So. We're gonna have our break here, get some drinks, and let y'all do your restroom, snacks, all that good stuff, and be back in uh, five to ten. We'll be back, guys. See you in a bit. Love y'all. All right, all set. Excellent, excellent. Welcome back, everybody, to Heathens and Heroes. I hope you had a nice break. I hope you got your bits. You relieved yourself, did everything you needed to enjoy this last half with us as well. Uh, as we all dive back in right where we left off with our heroes, uh, the majority of them now standing in the ankle deep sand pit that they had found in the crevice behind the horrors. Krigor still riding uh, the corpse of the other one as he just kind of stands triumphantly on it. And Einar, are you kind of looking in? At the moment, uh, as the battle just ended, Kregor, you're still the only one who has seen yeah. uh, the, everything else in there. But everyone else, you are all now kind of looking at each other and this dead, slit creature. I was going to say, as I'm coming down, almost immediately, just I'm full of this adrenaline right now, I hop off it and walk immediately towards the rock, and I kind of I want to I want to do a deep investigation before I pick it up if I can. I call oh. out, "Woo! Nice kill, Gregor! Yeah, man, you're the best!" Oh, I, I hear him. Eldest, may I, I just tell I'm you, gonna... you are looking fine right now. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Gregor, it's like, "Hey, what are you looking at?" And that's my help. <laughs> Yeah, and I hear everybody talking to me, but I'm just ignoring it, or I just just right, because so of the well, just oh, no. because okay, of the adrenaline. Oh, that spooked me. <laughs> what happened? He froze for a second. I was like, oh no. Oh, um, yeah, but you know, just because of the adrenaline, I'm just I'm I'm phasing out everybody, and I look at it and I give a quick overview. Can I do an investigation before I pick it up? Is that okay? Um, or should I just pick it up? So. Yeah, no, uh, give me first a investigation. Oh. And I also want you to give me a nature. 
Wait, was that with advantage? Um, are, are y'all actively helping as he's kind of like zoning y'all out at the moment? Uh, yes, I am. And, okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and just give me one more of each roll, uh, except for the, the nature. That one is yours for you. But the investigation gets advantage. All right. All right. It's a nat 20. Give it to him, baby. So, looking down and over this rock, it is uh, in length about the size of your forearm. Uh, but its wideness is, uh, you know, like two fists up next to each other, you know, so it's kind of got that oval oblong shape. The outside matches the same color of the sand below. And as you're looking, you can tell that the hook horrors basically carved out and grinded up this rocky area. They made the crevice and this little nest and actually broke down and uh, continued to break down the debris to create this sand pit that you're in. It's, you know, uh, definitely a, a comfortable little nest. And looking at it, you can tell just from where it's at, the color it has and how it almost matches the first uh, color and texture scheme of the hook horror that you saw. It is definitely a hook or egg. And as you don't quite pick it up, but you bring your hand close, you can see that it's shifting slightly in the sand itself. And as you look around, you can see that there are the remains of what look to be a few other eggshells around here possibly already uh, cracked and gone, or you're, you're unsure. But uh, there were others, and now there's just the one, and it's still trembling ever so slightly. Oh, gosh. You wanted a dog. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Or, or you're going to get a pet. No. some eggs. Well, I mean, we got all the ripple bark we need, huh? You know? <laughs> Maybe actually, we are kind of running low on ripple bark. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. Well, I kind of, uh, you know, I look, at, I look at Ramis, I look at Nandor, Eldith, Ront. I pick up the egg. <laughs> I know. I, I well, I know's on the ledge, so I'm kind of like just looking around at you guys. Take the egg. Take. The yeah, I take I take the egg and um, I kind of wrap it up in and um, maybe not wrap it up, but I do put it in my backpack and maybe cover it with the top of the tapestry a little bit just to kind of keep it warm. All right, all right, sounds good. You you know you put it away for safekeeping as best as possible and kind of look to everybody with this mix of you know elation and uh like you know anxiety of oh shit now you've got a baby in your backpack i'm gonna take this guys and i'm going to first of all maybe if we get out of here it might be worth some money we'll see if we can do that but we'll see what happens with it i'm okay. gonna tie a rope off up here on the ledge and toss it down so that they can climb up and, you know, it's uh, not an even cavern that you're in, so there are enough little outcroppings that you can find one that's suitable enough for a rope. At least just for this, you know, size and weight. So. Hey, Matt, can I skin the hook and try to make armor out of its outer... Uh, go ahead and make me a survival. Oh, that's like... Oh, death will help him. <laughs> All right. What are you doing? So you... <laughs> she walks up as you start to cut it, and it's just like, "Oh wait, hold on, no, no, don't worry. This is what I did back home. Here, let me let me help you a little bit and show you the ropes uh, about how to skin some under dark creatures. I'm sure you where you're from, you've got plenty of you know the the big stuff like the yaks and the cows and." You know the sheep and you know all that 
all that stuff he got on the surface. But no, down here we do it a little different. And she kind of goes through showing you a little bit of uh, how best to remove the chitness armor that it has uh, on its back and on some other areas that, that are, you know, a little bit more plated on its exterior. She's like, yeah, see all this actual hide? Worthless. The stuff rots very quickly, but that's why you need to get the armor pieces specifically. Uh, and so you'll go through... And you probably get about, uh, well, how long do you want to stay here spending to, you know, cut through and do? <sighs> I'm going to climb yeah. up the rope. <laughs> I was say, yeah, they're going to go up, yeah. All right, so you're going to take a bit of time. Yeah. Is, uh, so, you know, usable pieces that were not too heavily damaged during the battle or, you know, are too thin and brittle. It'll probably take you about an hour to gather them all, uh, you know, going through the process. Uh, but you'll get about 10 pounds of hook horror chicken. So. Can I also get its meat? Uh, you probably get be able to get a bit of the meat in, in the process, you know. Um, probably an equal amount of usable good 10 pounds uh, between the two. Craig or Nandor? I got us some meat. Oh, that'll go cool. perfect with it, man. Appreciate it. With what? The ripple bark, of course. <laughs> you can save that. We need to. I'm glad that. you asked. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait! No, Craigor, we need to save the ripple bark for later. We'll just eat this for now. Save the rations of ripple bark. <laughs> okay. You're not going to make the oodles out of it. I look at, at Gregor as I'm helping him up, and I'm like, he's right. You know, ripple bark will last as that meat will go bad eventually. And we want to use that first. I mean, yeah. I was thinking, you know, some nice hookworm meat sandwiches with the ripple bark. But, hey, you know, you guys, yeah, we can just do the meat. That's okay. That's hook horror, not worm. Hook, hook worms, hook horror. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Well, now you know. They're called hook horrors. Okay. I'm going to use Dawn to talk to... <laughs> I know I'd be like, you waste your kindness on him. You're so Jeez. kind, Einar. <laughs> You're so well, you know. <laughs> I also pull out the bottle of whiskey and hand it to Aldith that she gets up top. She gets out, grabs it, looks at it, looks at you, looks at it, looks at you one more time, takes a drink, and then puts a little on her wound. <laughs> so, oh, thank you, thank you. You still, you still have that that little thing you were showering, uh, oh, oh, Gregor with, yeah. Oh God. Oh yeah. Oh, you want some water? Oh yeah, my hands are a bit grimy with hookor on them right now, and you know it collects sand really easily. Now my hands are also really sandy, and I don't really like the sand. I've never really been to a beach. I don't really ever want to go. Yeah, let's move a little ways away from the crevice so that we don't end up accidentally drowning somebody down there. <laughs> Looks over with this thought of like, mm, okay. You know, let, let's just get back out to the main Quite game, nerds. if you don't mind. Yeah, you were... Uh, sure, sure. Actually, Nandor, no. With your nine passive? Nah. Hmm. 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 Yep, I will, I will head out when everybody's ready. I'll wait for, till Ramas is up, though. I was going to have Ramas stay with me, but... Okay. Yeah, you can come too. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, it'll take a, about an hour of y'all chilling around this area, either down here or, you know, up top in the main cavern area. Uh, as. Uh, they can get a short rest in, right? Uh, yes, if you would like, yeah. This is can constitute as a short rest. That's and, uh, yeah. 
Get some health so. back, some stuff back. All right. Yeah, I don't think the short rest thing is having an issue right now. We ran into that problem last time. I don't know. Damn you, Foundry! So, uh, whatever you want to be getting for your short rest, uh, Einar, I believe, a D6 for you, plus your constitution, Craigor. Can use d8 plus your constitution up to five as that's what level you are uh nandor's also a d8 and ramas you're a d10 for your uh stuff i don't know if you know you know and you're good i was like i don't think i i need a well it's not that i don't need a roll but like i'm the one working and still doing stuff so it's like not even a rest for me you know i think you're also at full hp so I believe I am. Yep, I am. Cool. Alright. Um, and so, as you know, you, Ramos, get your pieces and everybody relaxes. Anything you would like to do during the hour? Any, what would you like to do after your short rest? Mm. Everyone set up camp? I'll tell you guys one thing for sure. I I could use a rest. Okay. Uh, then if y'all want to be safe and not be possibly harmed, come with me. Continue, you know. Okay. All right. So then I'm and try to get up here if it, say, it'll you don't work. have to move your character uh, you know theater of the mind part uh, for all this okay I'm gonna try to get it like over here like basically where we killed the big one all right then I'm gonna move we're gonna move their bodies out of the way and then I'm gonna use tiny hut there okay okay so I'll just here I'll do this and, and before I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, if you have to use the restroom, use it now. You can't get out for eight hours. Ah, hook horror. Uh Actually, so they, ha they have to be in it whenever you cast it, but afterwards they can go out in it as much as they want. Okay. Basically, it's just... Uh... Uh, can they? I I always read it as you can so. go out, but you can't come back in. Uh, no, it's whoever you deem uh, available once you cast it. But like, if you cast it and someone's outside of it, then they can't go in. Okay, I'll cast it then. Gotcha. Oh, you're a ritualist. I had no idea. Me too. <laughs> That's awesome. The more you know. I mean, you, you, did did you cast that in a, out of character? Did you cast that in a in a minute, or did you take the full ten minutes for that? Minute. I mean, I would have just used it as the ritual. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it the the full like consuming your power. It's fine. We're gonna sleep anyways. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I'm gonna forge me some armor real quick. You guys can get some sleep. I'll take first watch. All right. So all of you then, you know, get a uh, as comfortable as you can be uh, within the sphere. Uh, and Ramos, you know, you take your armor, uh, your pieces of chitin that you've gotten a little bit outside the sphere so you can work without disturbing them. And, uh, what are you trying to make? Full body suit of armor. So, like, plate armor uh, equivalent, except that of bone and whatnot? Yeah. So, with what you have, you'd probably be able enough to make a half plate right now. 
Um, and they'd have to collect a little bit more chitin along the way uh, to create the full uh, plate stylings of armor. Well, I was going to go get the other the other one that we killed, too. Uh, well, that 14 I had was from between the both bodies. Oh, okay. So you basically got, like, a good five uh, pounds from each that you have to use, you know, like, good chunks and everything that were not damaged during the battle and other things like that. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, and, because I figured you were going to make use of the second body at some point in the night. Um, I was going to say, I get it and they come back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it'll take some time to get it. Uh, you would probably, if you take about 10 hours and I'll a few checks. Full, yeah, I'll take the full, uh, full night to do it. Okay, okay. Um, go ahead then, and, uh, I'm gonna have you make two skill checks for me. Uh, the first one being intelligence for the knowledge of how to craft the armor and everything. Uh, and the second one being strength for actually putting it together. Uh, ability on both or saving throw on both? Uh, ability on both. All right. All right. Uh, so you begin the work uh, throughout the night, and now make me a constitution save as you are staying up all night. Brought on by the adrenaline and the ideas in your mind, you continue to hammer away at this using very makeshift tools. You don't have any of the proper armor crafting tools with you, so you are trying to make it work with what you have available. And uh, so it is not as strong as it could be, uh, but you are able to pushing through the entire night able to start the beginning foundation of a half breastplate uh, that, you know, covers the shoulders down to about half of the forearms. Uh, it's got your abdomen fully covered with like the uh, almost like samurai side greaves style that cover a little bit of your upper thigh. Um, and, ah, I got a fly in my nose. Uh, uh, you also can shape a little bit to, like, the beginning styles of, like, the interior of a helmet, but not the full helmet itself. Uh, and, you know, that, and that involves going back for the occasional small bent pieces that you would need off the knee and other things like that from the horrors. Uh, and so... It's functional, uncomfortable, as it has no padding on the interior, so there's a bit of chafing and rubbing that it does for the moment, but, you know, there are little modifications you'll you see and feel that you'll need to make it more comfortable and things like that, but it looks like a good start. Cool. I'll put it in my backpack and get more pieces later for it. All right. Uh, now, going through the night, you are a bit distracted, but you don't really hear anything through the evening that sounds like it comes close. There's no distant rumbles. There's no sounds of things encroaching. And it feels like, for the most part, the night goes by unimpeded. Cool. So... We will then be picking up where this, however this leads off in the morning, however they wake up, next time. As we have had our three hour mark, we got some tired folks. I'm not going <laughs> to push y'all any longer. <laughs> so I will pass it back over to our host of hosts, Crack Cracker T. Craigmore. A man of many names. Thank you, Matt. Thank you as always. Fantastic work. Guys, fun episode, as always, as well. Um, let me change screens here. Hold on. 
So, okay. Well, that is going to conclude episode 14 of Heathens and Heroes. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Happy to have you here. As always, thank you for the support. Um, we're going to do our usual roundtable. Anybody got anything to say? We'll start with, uh, uh, let's do Matt this time. How about that? Mix it up a bit. You were going to say me, weren't you? I was going to say you, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I saw him look at you, but it all looks like he looks at the same people, but I knew yeah. he was first. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with uh, Matt this time. Well, that's different. All right. All right. Um, so, uh, not, not too much excitement to add. You know, much love to everybody. Uh, I think our YouTube for Heathens and Heroes is at 17 or 18 subscribers. We get a custom URL at 100 subscribers. If they haven't changed that, I haven't checked that, so don't quote me. Uh, but it used to be 100 back whenever I first started YouTube. And so anybody you let know of that, things like that, uh, would be much appreciated. So we can get that awesome custom URL, make it easier for people to find, and not have all those numbers and digits afterwards. So aside from that, much love. Uh, Babylon Banter episode two will be on YouTube by the end of the week, and that's it for me. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Lucas, do you have anything you want to say? As always, thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out with us while we go through yet another one of our excellent adventures here on Heathens and Heroes. Uh, check out the Twitch channels. Of every single one of these guys, Cracker T23, Reaper's Past, Doomed Atlas, and Hobbs and Mods. Make sure you drop them follows if you're not already following them. Show them some love. Uh, also check out our socials. Uh, we will be obviously posting updates in terms of when we're playing Heathens and Heroes there. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. You guys are awesome. Uh, you make this 100% worthwhile, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, and as always, uh, or I know that you're here uh, permanently now. We're happy to have you, man, and and thank you so much for joining us, as always. Um, Troy, you got anything you want to say? <laughs> uh, love you guys. Thank you for staying with us this long. Uh, episode 14. Man, still going. Uh, it's fun. It's because of you guys that we do this. Other than that, we're just Five guys getting together and not playing D and D, and screwing up, but having a fun time doing it. So here we are. Uh, as always, follow these guys on all their social medias, uh, Twitter. Keep in contact with us. Let us. We'll let you know what's going on. We might be changing our schedule coming up soon, so that might be in the works. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Aaron Guard, thanks for joining us. Matt, thank you for being a great DM as always, my good sir. Connor, aka Cracker, aka Craig or the Clutch, as always. Two kills tonight, boys and girls. Two kills tonight. You see him? Came in clutch. And Wait, Esteban, was that me? That was you, buddy. And Esteban, Nandor, Reaper's Pass. Follow him. It's always fun, boys. Thanks. Love y'all. Esteban. I know you want to say something. Come on. <laughs> um Nitrix. Yeah, first of all, good night tricks or good morning. Yeah, let's go with good morning. Um What do I say? What do I say? Thank you all for watching. Seriously. Go sub to the YouTube channel, like Matt said. Uh follow us on everything that we do. Because there's plenty of stupidity out there for, from us. More than just here. Trust me. Um yeah that's all i really got to say thank y'all for watching i love you guys seriously very nice and uh as for me uh same thing as always thank you guys so much for tuning in happy to have you here wouldn't want to do this with anybody else uh i i really needed this this week so that was a lot of fun thank you guys appreciate it um and other than that that's uh that goes around our round table of heroes and we're gonna call it a night guys Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Again, keep pay attention pay attention to our uh, our social accounts so that you can find out when our schedule change is going to be. If it changes, we're not 100% yet, but uh, 
keep an eye out for that and you guys will know when we're going to go live at what time and when um that's gonna do it take care journey on stay strong we'll see you on the next one guys